Hello everyone. This is going to be one of those ramble videos where I'm going to like put together a whole bunch of different shots just to uh, get the thoughts out of my head as they happen because I've I've been in this uh, state of mind where I, I think I have this idea that I want to make a video about, but then uh, another one comes along and then I, I know that three ideas ago I forgot something so I'm gonna try to like remember everything I wanted to say in this ramble video but it might take me a while to get it all out so um, recap uh, if you don't know why I make ramble videos on my channel uh, you should know that I do this as a catharsis um, this is for me, not for you. People just watch. Um, and so, yeah, uh, the topic just doesn't stay the same forever. Any ramble that I do, there's always a whole bunch of different topics. Right now, what I'm going to do while I'm talking is make sure all the ink in my flag pens works. Remember my little Martha Stewart trick? Uh, for my flag pen bowl. Uh, the one that I take out to my voter registration drive. Well, summer's over and schools are asking me to come talk about voting. And today will be the first one of the uh, abbreviated right before the election, but their, their school in session little session that I'm going to have. So... It's very embarrassing to go out there and hand someone a pen and the pen doesn't work. So before I go to these things, um, every so often you should check every pen in your pen bowl. I don't know if that's like a pro tip that you would get from Martha Stewart or whatnot. But I recommend it. So yeah, um, a lot of people have been confused about my stance on the Atheism Plus thing. And... So am I. <laughs> because it is confusing. It's like... Most of what they, they say, you're, you're on board with, but it's not just the, the method that they're, they're doing it. You know, by taking something where you you have a community that 100% supports one thing and you try to move that support to other things. And I'm old. I'm getting really, really old because I've noticed the pattern that no matter what it is that, uh, that comes up in life that gets a near universal appeal, every fucking group that has its little special interest will come out of the woodwork and and try to take that appeal and funnel it into their group you know so it's like I'm in favor of human beings breathing and then there'll be this like special group that'll be an offshoot of an existing group that'll be like oh yeah well, we want to take human beings for breathing and and turn it into human beings for breathing plus feminism. It'll happen every fucking time. Um, and I made a video showing how there's a pattern between, you know, the Occupy movement and the Tea Party before that and the progress now and move on and all these other things. Um, I actually have a few other things to add to this list. Um, Atheism Plus, of course. Um, and Reason TV is now, um, I'd say, becoming smaller and smaller in its audience. Um, go to the Reason TV channel and see how it started and what it looks like now. Um, so, yeah. It could actually be that Fox News started with the int the actual honest intent to be fair and balanced. And then, you know, they just got taken over by 
you know, a subsection of human beings for breathing and, and getting news in a fair and balanced way. And, you know, that subsection was people who want to hear all conservative stuff all the time, 24-7. No matter what good fucking idea you have, somebody's going to come along and want to fucking turn it into what they've been waiting for all their lives. Like, obviously, if everyone's organizing around something, then they must be here for our fucking thing, you know? All of our hard work of being a crazy fucking whack job for fucking years. These people must be here for us, right? No, motherfucker. They were there for human beings fucking with a pulse and breathing. And then you thought that they were there for your little fucking niche fucking cause. A lot of my flags are slipping down the flagpole right here. Do -do -do. I get so many compliments on my flag bowl. Um, probably the most metrosexual thing that I own. Not the most metrosexual thing I have in my possession, though. That would probably be uh, a couple phone numbers of some specific individuals. It, it's just like, who would have those members on their phone? Anyways. The atheism fucking plus thing. I have flame wars going on in my... Uh, on my channel, in my comment section. And just in time for these flame wars to break out. There are people who are getting through some sort of filter and replying to other people, but they're not replying to me, but I get it in my email, this person has replied to you. YouTube's broken just in time for this flame war to break out. So I'm getting like, oh, an email every 10 minutes where somebody's responding to someone. I'm also finding that some of my older videos have flame wars that have been going on for a long time that I didn't know about. There's a video about boycotting the NIV Bible. And these guys are arguing back and forth about which Bible is the right one to have. And how, since I made that video, uh, Rupert Murdoch has bought other Bibles and Bible websites and stuff that you should also... Uh, boycott. I don't know. I didn't look into it. I was up on the stuff when I made the video originally. I'd have to look it up again. But, in the Atheism Plus crowd, it seems like, um, here we've got this, this convention, the Ascent of Atheism. The fuck happened here? Oh. Huh. <laughs> One of my uh, beads that I have in the bottom, my red, white, and blue beads, got stuck on the pen. Okay. So, it seems like in my comment section, the majority of YouTube atheists who have watched my video by PZ Myers and Greta Christina, and the other one by Greta Christina where she answered uh, the question that I didn't ask, but... Uh, Anyway, it seems like with the thumbs and the comments, Atheism Plus is not very popular on YouTube. And in, in some videos that I haven't posted yet, uh, some of these uh, convention speakers, including some YouTubers like Seth, the Thinking Atheist, uh, they think that YouTube comments section is, is is the equivalent of hell. And so... We're all trolls. I, you know, YouTube comments don't mean shit to them. They think that uh, it is not a very good litmus test because they... They have their website, right? Which a lot of people accuse of being an echo chamber. 
Um, echo chamber being a word that I only first learned about on the movie Koch Brothers Exposed when I uh, went and saw it being screened at my library. Do -do -do. Former Representative Dennis Upwan, he was the one who was screening it. Anyways, this echo chamber thing, it's like you hear something on one blog, and then you go to another, and they say that same word, and they say the same word in another place, and another place, and all of a sudden, if you see five blogs in the same day, or five different media outlets in the same day, talking about the same concept and, and applying it to something, you're going to start believing that shit. It's an echo chamber, they call it. Um, and it's a very effective tool, I, I suppose. Um, ask Carl Rove, the atheist. Some, some of you people are probably right now saying, wait, he's an atheist? Can we throw him back? Can we kick him out? No, no, we can't. Um, this, this shit is not a club where we can control who, all, who our members are. Atheism Plus, maybe, you know, because you can ban someone from your blog and shit and, and make sure that all of the message on your blog is in line with your own beliefs and the blogs that you link to are also that way and if anyone steps out of line, we know what to do, right? We fucking block their shit. Those people become pariahs. So, another thing about Atheism Plus, okay, I'm done testing my pens. Um, another thing about Atheism Plus, I'm not uh, an expert in logic as far as mathematics goes, that, you know, like, um, You know, I, I can figure out what some of the uh, uh, upper-level thinkers in, in mathematics are trying to say uh, just from my background knowledge with uh, AND gates and NAND gates and, and working with circuitry and, and, and how they work with logic. But there is this concept in logic of equivalency. Like, red equals red. And one of the properties of equivalency is if you flip it around, you know, and the first red is now on the other side of the, the, the equal sign, then it's still equivalent, right? And that's one of the ways that you can test whether if someone is saying something that is supposed to be equivalent, um you can sometimes flip it around if they're if they're trying to say that it's this absolute truth right for instance um uh god made man you flip it around does man made god seem true in the same way that god made man is no so there's a level of truth there as far as equivalency that is that is not there but there are a lot of things that, uh, especially in math, that if they're on one side of the equation, they, they will uh, balance out with the other side. Now, as far as atheism plus, in this convention that I went to, the Ascent of Atheism, and in other places, proponents of atheism plus have said that you already stand for all these things if you're an atheist. If you came to this atheism through logic, you already like all of these social justice issues. You know, and, and this Atheism Plus place is just a safe haven. It's a website for people to be able to talk about all of these things that they already believe about, and they're just putting a label on it, and that it already existed, and it's already been there. Right, and one of the things they're they're trying to say by this, I feel, 
is that if you are an atheist and you follow the logic of, of how you became an atheist and the logic of how you stand for uh, civil rights for atheists, you should also stand for the civil rights of everyone else. And you will hear the argument of, you know, they came for this group and, and I uh, didn't speak up and they came for this group and I didn't speak up and then when they finally came for me, uh, there was no one to speak up. You know, there was no one to reach out for. There's that, that uh, parable. But, here's the thing. To add atheism to all of these social justice issues, okay, is not the same as these social justice issues adding atheism. You know, here we are in, you know, two groups. I'll fucking draw this out. Ooh, doo -doo, doo -doo -doo. They're trying to say these these things are are this level of truth. Like you already you already believe this. This is just a no brainer. You know, they're gonna welcome us and we're gonna welcome them, and we're gonna make this group where it's you know social justice people who who uh, stand for gay rights and uh, civil rights for people of every color and ableism or anti-ableism, uh, anti-ageism, all this stuff, right? And they're going to see, by the way that we hold ourselves and we fight for them, they're going to see a better face on us, right? Um, didn't fucking work with the uh, black civil rights movement. In fact, a lot of homophobia came out of the black civil rights movement. Um... I don't think you have to look very far to see how there were civil rights leaders who were very homophobic and preached against being a homosexual at all, ever, in any case. You know? And then there's the ones that uh, say, well, it's okay for you to be a homosexual if you, as long as you don't act on it. All sorts of, of places where people in one group that have a civil rights problem don't actually see the other people losing their civil rights or, or not having them as being a problem. Okay? Um, and to say that it is very easy for us to adopt all of these social justice stances is not the same as these social justice stances finding it easy to adopt atheism as well to their platform. In fact, most people who are against any of these social justice issues try to associate them with being godless in order to uh, demonize them. I, I, I believe it's almost definitional to what demonizing is. Um, you say that something is against God. You know, it's against God's will. You know, that's what demons would have you do. You know? <laughs> so, here's this group of atheists who care about all these other social justice issues trying to put a good face on atheism by saying, okay, we now support all of these issues. And all of the people who are against those social justice issues are saying, don't fucking jump ship and go over to that side. That's where the godless people are. Those people are against God. You know? So are these social justice uh, people, are they going to church? You know? The, the people that we're trying to join here? The pre people that we're trying to start supporting? Because it seems to me that a lot of these people who are supporting gay rights, uh, black rights, people of color rights, you know, uh, anti-ableism, all this stuff, people that support the environment, they're churchgoers. And they don't like to think that the movement that they are working for 
is in conjunction with the the logical mindset of a godless person. They like to think of themselves as doing God's good work. See, there's people who think that that God is a capitalist, that Jesus is a capitalist. And then there's people who think that Jesus is a socialist. You know, and they both believe that arguing for their side equals arguing for what Jesus would want. Right? And if you start trying to hang out with one side and say, um, I'm not with Jesus, and I came to the same conclusion as you. Yes, that's what we need. Are they going to want you the fuck around? No. We're talking about a fucking country in, in America here where it's fucking 80% fucking theist. Okay? 80% Christian, rather. It's only 8% non altogether, and only 4% openly atheist. Okay? Even... Leaving out the other religions, you know, that 12% that, uh, you know, they're, they're not in the, the Christian majority. We're talking about two groups that when split into capitalists versus socialists, they still outnumber any other group that you could imagine as far as, you know, the, the Christian component to them that is working for whatever they think is social justice. You know, the, the capitalists who think that stealing from people um, by tax, you know, the, the capitalists who think that once they make something that they should be able to hold on to it forever, you know, and taking it from them is social injustice. They believe that, you know, theft is against what Jesus would want. And that's... They have all these other reasons for for justifying what they think, too. The socialists, you know, they're like, Jesus would, would uh, give everything to the poor, you know. Uh, through the uh, eye of a needle, the rich man is trying to get through, like a camel, you know, through the eye of a needle. And, you know, that's the rich man trying to get into heaven. <sighs> this is why uh, states like Texas and California and Alaska are never going to be allowed to split into two and become two different states because then they'd get two sets of senators instead of one and the other states would would be like holy crap they're gonna outnumber us you know uh... there there was something in how the american system was made that that uh, really um, it tried to uh, prevent the little states from from getting uh, overpowered by the big ones. But what I'm trying to say here is even if we take that 80% of Christians and split them in two, neither, one, neither side w needs or wants godless people on their side. Okay? They each got 40% uh, of all the voters. You know, our country is fucking split. The vote in November will fucking bear this out that we're pretty much a split fucking country, right? Those Christians are split down the line, too. It's not like... Uh, even if you were to skew it to where everyone who was in the 20% that's left beyond Christian, if all those people were on the Democrat side, right? That would skew it so that 50% uh, of this country were Christian Republicans, Christian conservatives, right? Even if you skewed it that way, you're left with 30% Christian Democrats plus the other, you know, 20% 20, 20 equaling, you know, half. Even if you, if you thought that there was not a such thing as a conservative atheist, which there is, I know a few. And they are looking at the atheism plus thing with like, yep, yeah, that's why we can't have nice things, you know. Even, even if the only way that the the Democrats have their numbers is by having all of the other religions or uh, 
people who check something other than Christian in their voter registration, they still don't want atheists. Okay? They still don't want to be associated with godlessness because here, here's the, the demographics of this. Democrats are trying to win over more people. All right? 4% of the country, atheist. 50% of the country, conservative. Which ones are they trying to, to pull more people to, from, you know? Is it easier to change someone's political views just enough to make them a Democrat or change someone's religious views? You know? Which is the larger and easier demographic to go after? <sighs> All right. To be continued. Okay, so next leg of the trip. Better put my seatbelt on. I drive past one of those police dragnets every day. Everywhere I go, there's a high school where police don't want you to speed and they want to check to see if you're wearing seat belts and anything they can get you on. So, uh, where were we? Atheism Plus. Okay, so, I'm told that because you're an atheist, you probably already have all these other social values that are in Atheism Plus. Problem, okay? Some of the values that I have that I've come to that are that are almost directly related to atheism. Like, it, they're, they're extensions that are so close to my atheism, they're not included in Atheism Plus because Atheism Plus already has feminism. Because one of the biggest things that I that I just cannot understand about religion, particularly Judaism and Christianity, is circumcision. Chopping a piece of your packer off, right? Guess what? That's not a that's not a thing that feminism takes up. No, no. That's a thing that MRAs take up. That's an MRA cause, normally. Are you going to allow MRAs into Atheism Plus? Now that, uh... Now that you've made it this movement for social justice? What about... I, see, I, I figure that feminists will bring the whole f female genital mutilation, but are they going to bring the male genital mutilation? Because, you know... That MRA issue has the MRA baggage of all the other MRA issues that are normally associated with it, you know? It would make it a lot easier for me if Atheism Plus would make the sales pitch. Okay, we'll also take circumcision, all you anti-circumcisioners that are in the MRA crowd, right? And we'll take that issue and make it a feminine issue. Like, we'll say, no baby genital mutilation, not just girls, but boys too. Or uh, we'll say that women have the right to not be chafed so much after an hour of sex because uh, guys with, you know, anteaters, they don't chafe women as much because we're naturally supposed to have that. You know, we, we can just make everyone uh, without, you know, their anteater intact. We can just say that, that, that they're a little bit more dangerous to, you know, the lady parts, maybe. You know? I don't see Atheism Plus making this sales pitch because of the people I, I see uh, running the thing. So, they've lost me, you know? 
And and the thing is, I'm looking right at Greta Christina, right on stage at the Ascent of Atheism. She's like, well, you already have these values. You know, when you became an atheist, you know, most logically you, you came to these other values that we are now going to support. Are they going to support, support MRA issues? You know, I know they're going to support, you know, equality and how, you know, most religions, they, they oppress women. I know they're, they're going to support the women in that. Are they going to support the men? So, I've got another thing to show you guys. Uh, let's roll the window up. A little bit anyway. So, Atheism Plus, we're still on that subject. Here we go. When I first saw Atheism Plus, I, I was like, you mean humanism? You know? But you, you don't have to be an atheist to be a humanist or a secularist, right? A lot of atheists don't understand that secular does not mean that you're an atheist, all right? It's like a meeting place where uh, everyone is free to believe whatever they want, right? That's the area of secularism. Um, when, when secularism was first used, it was used on monks who weren't tied to a certain church. You know, the word secular was applied to them. Anyways, I go to this conference out in Grand Junction, and I came back and I, and I posted four videos from it, right? And in three of the four videos, there's this Jamaican character. Apparently, he was the only person in the crowd who was a Christian. And from the looks of it, I was the only person in the crowd who was an atheist that felt for him because I was the only person who understood that secular does not necessarily mean atheist, aside from him. Um, because to them, you know, everyone there, if, you, if you're a secularist, then just by logical extension, you're most likely going to become an atheist. Do you all see where I'm going here? Okay. So this guy gets a... Uh, he gets a flyer for this uh, Secular Coalition of, of America. They made their first uh, state with a chapter, Colorado, right? They've got a Colorado chapter. It's based in Grand Junction. He, he reads this flyer to come to the event, and he's thinking, well... I'm a secular humanist, not realizing that there was about to be a whole bunch of religion bashing going on. Because there's a lot of atheists who will hide behind the word secular as, you know, place where we can bash religion because we know we're all atheists, right? So, while I was there, I got this business card, right? I got this business card from Jesse in Grand Junction in Colorado. Let me show you guys this business card, right? Uh, if I remember, I might put a link to this. In the description box, I might put a link to their Facebook group. You can join it if you want. I think it might take off, but as you saw right there, they call themselves humanists doing good. Because it wasn't good enough for them to be in a humanist group that bashed religion all the time. No, they decided that they wanted to go out and do good deeds, like rake people's leaves, and show people that atheists can go around and rake your leaves. I'm serious here. Um, link in the description box, if I remember, to a video of Jesse saying that we should go out and do good deeds like rake people's leaves. Not kidding. 
Okay, so they took the Humanist logo, which isn't copyrighted. It was uh, it was given as charity in 1965 to the British Humanist Association, and then it was just kind of adopted by all sorts of humanist associations. It's kind of like the peace sign, or if you will, it's kind of like the out atheist A, and adding a fucking plus sign to it. Instead of adding a plus sign for Jesse's group in uh, Grand Junction, they decided to take the happy human and make him look happy. Make him look like he's jumping for fucking joy, right? So this whole, let's make our group look like it does more beneficial things for everybody else than it used to and, and rebrand it a little bit and take control over it and, and, and try to chart the direction of it into the things that we already care about. That shit, that's been going on for a long fucking time, all right? I've even heard the argument that Dawkins making the out Atheist A in the first fucking place was, in a sense, trying to direct the, the energy of everyone who agreed that they were atheists into scientific endeavors and then later the non-believers giving aid. But still, he's the one that cares about science, right? And, and a lot of other atheists do, but he took the support for atheism, tried to funnel it into science. Not as evil, by any means, as, as trying to funnel it into what will eventually be, uh, fuck, saving dolphins from fucking nets, you know, so that we have fucking whale wars where people are fucking getting on pirate ships and, and fucking attacking fishing vessels and shit. This is the kind of shit I think about when I'm about to go register some kids to vote. Wonderful shit. And I'm about to talk about things completely not this. You know? These kids, they've got everything ahead of them and they, and they don't see this fucking history of people trying to co-op different fucking groups into their group. I see a fucking new group about every fucking week at least I went to that fucking Middle East peace conference thing that I, that I put on my channel for the green party that I filmed part that I cut out in the beginning um, that had nothing to do with the, the imam and, and the rabbi was, was just announcements and in two of the fucking announcements in two of the announcements, it was just people standing up to say that they had formed a new group, right? Let me tell you fuckers something. One of the people that, that fucking stalked the Occupy movement in my city the most, okay? We called him Mr. Clean for fucking ever because we didn't know his name. He was fucking anonymous, but he would come and, and just piss off people and argue with them all the time. I learned some shit from this fucker, right? His name is actually George. Um, I, I kept talking with him long enough that I actually fucking learned his fucking real fucking name, right? Because I think he, he was, at that point, certain that I was not going to, uh, I don't know, firebomb his fucking house, you know? Well, George, he sent me a fucking video it's on fucking YouTube, it has fucking millions of fucking hits, right? Shitload of hits, but still people don't get this fucking concept. It's called the first follower, right? Basically, one person starts some shit, right? And everybody looks at him like he's fucking crazy. In this video, 
uh, the fucker's dancing, right? And he's, I think he's at like a Fish or Grateful Dead concert, and he looks fucking ridiculous. Like, ah, look, fucking arms, salt, spaghetti and shit. And then, one person starts dancing with him. Right? Then all of a sudden, he doesn't look as, as fucking crazy. And then another person, and another person, and another person. Right? Pretty soon, the whole fucking crowd is dancing with this motherfucker. And the point of the fucking video, the moral of the fucking story, what I want you guys to fucking take away from this is... The most important person in this equation was not the guy that fucking was dancing in the first fucking place. It was the first follower, right? I just want to say right now, thank you to everyone who fucking gave uh, a charity donation uh, either money or fucking uh, a thing to the eBay auction for, for MSF through DPR Jones, all right? And, it, and in this analogy, DPR Jones is the spaghetti-armed, crazy-looking motherfucker, right? The most important people in this equation are not the person who started it all. It's everybody who fucking helps out, you know? And then leads other people to fucking help out. I don't know how many items were in the fucking auction last year, but I know you didn't have to click that little button to have more than 50 show up on a fucking page. Right? But now, even more people are doing it. And, and the fucking thing is growing, and it's a good fucking thing that it's growing, right? You know what I don't want to fucking see? I don't want to see somebody else get up and say, well, I don't like DPR Jones because um, we have this little disagreement on, on something, and it's about, like, fucking whether or not to like fucking theor theoretical bullshit or, or favorite him and... and, and and feature him on my on his channel, you know, and and so instead of doing his MSF thing, I'm gonna do my own, you know, and I'm gonna call it instead of the uh, the 24-hour blog TV event, I'm gonna call it the 24-hour Stickam event, and we're gonna do Stickam instead, you know, but everything else will be the same. That's the motherfucker that doesn't fucking understand. What I'm getting at here. I just ran a yellow. It was motherfucking yellow. Maybe like orange-ish. things to say for now, and, I, and I'm, I'm coming up on this uh, school, and I heard there was going to be, like, bumper cars or something at this event. I don't feel like taking my camera out and filming kids at a school. Uh, if you haven't noticed from all the other videos that we do, we try to get just maybe the teacher fanning out the registration forms, or we try to... Uh, film ourselves outside the school with something, you know, noticeable from the fucking school. Um. Go Steelers! She has a Steelers jersey on. Again, not going to turn my camera around to film her. And 
I got 16 minutes to get there and set up. I'm not gonna pull out the bunting. And if you guys ever get the privilege of seeing the bunting, you'll know why I'm not pulling out the bunting for this one. I register at least one person. I don't know who's going to go to this thing. It's supposed to be a high school that uh, can give people a second chance, and so the, their age demographic is a little bit higher, but they're going to have, like, bumper cars. That was on the flyer. So I don't get it because the, the kind of bumper cars that I normally see are, like, for younger kids, so... We'll see how many I, I register this time around. I want to turn the camera off, but this road is kind of uh, winding. So this is what it looks like when I set up at a school. That's what we do. It's pretty simple. So we're here at the uh, Life Skills Center and we were here for their open house. It starts off their school year and eight new voters, two of them faculty. Awesome. Actually, I know the law and I'm allowed to read to you guys the uh, preferences, the party affiliations off this. I can't tell you who is what, but I can tell you Democrat, Green Party, unaffiliated, 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 Democrat, Democrat, and Democrat. So yes, I am the world's worst Republican delegate. That's okay. I like doing this. I don't care what party someone affiliates with. Sometimes it's hard to park with a uh, giant truck. Sometimes it's hard to place your camera with a giant truck. Do, do, do. No, you will stay up. How did I get this to work before I went in there? Crap. Okay. So, if you haven't figured it out, uh, you guys are on a tripod. Um, and at this event, uh, I met a girl named uh, Christina. She's a child welfare worker and she has a program that uh, teaches teens to be self-sufficient. It, it was awesome to be a, across from somebody else who's like got a hobby or job that a really selfless thing to do because you gotta you gotta respect when somebody just basically signs on knowing that they're going to run into the worst situations you know like child welfare that's basically a like a soul sucking occupation registering people to vote. I didn't think of anything else for the topic of Atheism Plus at all. Um, 
that was awesome. We're going to be back in that high school on October 3rd to give a presentation. This time, this time around, all I, all I had to do was sit down and ask people if they were registered. That's, that's easy peasy. But giving our uh, presentation, it gets easier. You know, public speaking is, is uh, really easy for me. Here I make YouTube videos all the time. But, uh, you know, speaking really in public is a little bit different. Um, and especially for us, since we have like a wash, rinse, repeat sort of, this is what we say. You know, we start off with uh, the history of um, suffrage, right? And then we go into, uh, we like to use Nolan's political chart just to teach people, you know, that there's more than just right and left. And we try to chart uh, some popular political candidates that are in the news. And then we talk about ballot initiatives, you know, actual laws that these kids could be voting on in the very near, near future. And this year, a whole bunch of those ballot initiatives that we prepared them for didn't get enough signatures because I think the the cards are stacked against any one person trying to get signatures for a ballot initiative. It takes 87,000 signatures. So basically, you either have to have a group of really dedicated people. It has to be like 30 or 40 people that are really dedicated to it. Or you've got to pay for it. And I think that that's... Um, that's stupid. It's supposed to be about people starting an initiative. It's a ballot initiative. It's a citizen's initiative. But citizens can't do it unless it's a very large group. And... You know, it has to be a, a lot of people that have a lot of time on their hands to just stand outside of a Walmart and ask for signatures. And then the Secretary of State will go ahead and invalidate a whole bunch of signatures. Now, we were just the beneficiaries of the personhood amendment not getting enough signatures. The Secretary of State invalidated so many of their signatures that they... Uh, did not get their personhood amendment on the ballot. So I think the only statewide initiative we're voting on is Amendment 64 for the legalization of marijuana for people age 21 and over. And without the personhood amendment, going to be a lot of uh, conservatives who otherwise would have been very motivated to come out and vote that won't be, you know, as motivated, you know. Who knows whether they'll come out and vote or not. Maybe they're motivated against medical marijuana or, sorry, the legalization of marijuana. I'm so used to saying medical because that's all we have in Colorado Springs, but if uh, if we decriminalize marijuana and people 21 and over are allowed to carry an entire ounce on them, and I, you know, I've learned how big an ounce is. That's a huge amount of marijuana to be having on your person, to carrying it around. just come out instead of vote, trying to take away uh, abortion from women they'll be wanting to prevent people from having the right to have an ounce of marijuana I don't know so what I want to know in the description box if you listen this long 
to this whole video as I put it together. Tell me, besides thinking about Atheism Plus, what the fuck did you do to make this world a better place fucking today? Because I know what I did, you know? Six brand new voters and two voters that needed to change which state they were in. I registered them to vote, you know? And to me, that's small. That's a really, really freaking tiny thing, you know? But it's something. What did you do? I want to know. Put it in the description box. What did you do besides bitch and moan about atheism fucking plus? So, I may not have registered any Republicans today, but at least I'm still more Republican than Rational Roundtable because I still have a coffee cup. Hmm.